My name is Garba Safianu. I work with the Papua New Guinea Country Office. Uh, it's, it's a huge pleasure and opportunity to be part of this meeting. I will be co-presenting with my colleague uh, Harriet, uh, who is based in our regional office in Bangkok. Um, so a, 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 again, a, a very warm welcome to Papua New Guinea. I would like to share some of the work we've been doing around in the digital health space, uh, mainly looking at uh, supporting the government of PNG's um, uh, capacity to be able to manage adequate uh, logistics uh, system in the country uh, for COVID-19, and then specifically uh, to strengthen um, routine immunization in the country. Um, specifically, I'll be focusing mainly on some of the work we've done in the last one year around expanding um, the use of M supply uh, 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 around uh, nine provinces. Uh, next slide. So, um, so basically, our presentation will cover uh, two two key areas. Uh, one is we'll give you the background of PNG. I know most of you are very aware or familiar with our situation, but just as as, as a reminder, and then specifically a deep dive into the project itself, M supply uh, implementation or expansion, um, and how many sites we've covered and what we've done. Uh, specifically, how we hope that has uh, strengthened COVID-19 response in the country, uh, as well as look at opportunities for uh, remote healthcare work, uh, worker training as a mechanism or as an approach to building additional capacity uh, for digital health application, uh, especially within the context of PNG. Uh, so that will be the structure of our presentation. I will take the first half of the presentation, and Harriet will take the second component of the presentation. Uh, next slide. So as you may be aware, PNG is um, one of the biggest um, countries in, in, in the Pacific region, a uh, population of um, 7.6, some, sometimes 8 million, we're not, we're not sure exactly, but in the region of 7, 8 million people. Uh, it has a big, very big uh, uh, landmass, 446,000 um, square kilometers of land. Um, it's... Uh, it's a country with several languages. They say a country of a million journeys, 800 plus languages, um, um, uh, two million of, uh, of of the population of the eight million live uh, below the poverty line. 80 percent of the population of Papua New Guinea are in rural areas. Um, it is 195th out of 187 countries on gender equality index. Um, so that is the background of, of the country we are working with. In terms of topography, um, um, most of it has 600 islands, and most of the uh, settlements are not linked by road. You have to travel by air. Uh, so that is the kind of um, uh, environment we work with. Next slide. Uh, in terms of the digital environment, um, a large proportion of the country remains unconnected. Only um, about 13% of the country has electricity. Uh, less than 15% of the population have access to electricity, and then 85% live in rural areas, as I mentioned. 87% uh, of the population uh, is within the reach of mobile coverage. However, less than one third of that population uh, have, have a, a a, uh, access to, to to phone. Although there are about a million uh, people that uh, uh, have have internet uh, um, services or have access, but uh, this population are mainly located in cities. Uh, majority of the population of the country uh, do not have access, and which is a huge challenge. Uh, in terms of broadband uh, availability and uh, network quality, uh, it's uh, really um, a challenge. Uh, this is across the entire country, although it's better in the national capital and in some districts. But in terms of internet access, internet access is a huge uh, challenge across the entire country. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in terms of the current health situation, um, PNG, health, PNG had made significant progress in the last 15 years. However, um, um, there are a lot of challenges uh, still. Uh, more than 5,000 uh, babies die in PNG every year. 
uh, maternal mortality is still 171 per 100,000 lab births. Uh, more than 7,000 children do not reach their uh, fifth birthday. So the health indices have not significantly improved. Um, if you look at the progress made in under five mortality, uh, uh, infant mortality and under five mortality have made some progress. However, neonatal mortality has remained stagnant for the last uh, 10 years. Uh, it is a challenge um, um, moving or referring patient from one level to the next, from primary to secondary to tertiary, that has always been a challenge. Um, no wonder that when we, when the issue of, when we were faced with the pandemic, uh, PNG did not perform uh, very well. Immunization coverage um, has remained around 50% for the last uh, five to 10 years. And these are as a result of systemic um, issues uh, that is um, affecting the health delivery system in the entire country. Uh, unfortunately, in the Pacific uh, region, PNG had the lowest uptake of COVID-19. Only 5.3% of the population are fully immunized, and uh, only 6.5% of the, of, the, of the population uh, have, in terms of um, second dose, is even much, much lower. Um, over 44,000 uh, cases of COVID-19 have been reported, of which we had 600, uh, about 651 uh, deaths as of May 2022. Uh, so in terms of COVID-19 performance, um, PNG has not done very well. Uh, next slide. Um, I would like to highlight some of uh, some of the issues or some of the cha challenges faced um, in PNG, especially um, uh, in the programming environment. Um, in terms of the economy, uh, PNG has, in the last five years, has had a serious down economic downturn, uh, and this is. Uh, best illustrated by the fact that uh, if you look at the health sector allocation, um, the, the national allocation to the health sector, this has consistently been dropping for the last five years. In fact, in 2021, uh, it was 50% of what it was in 2020. Uh, so this has just drastically reduced the fiscal space in terms of how much uh, um, interventions uh, the country is able to do. Uh, the country is, is prone to natural disasters. Um, I think you could, um, all of us can remember the earthquake that happens, and this happens um, uh, frequently across the country. And this is a major impediment to, to both infrastructural development and to the provision of services. Um, in terms of rule of law, I think we are also very famous for some crime, sexual violence, issues to do with land disputes. So, so, so it's it's PNG. Probably must be ranked as one of those uh, very uh, insecure uh, country, uh, and which is a challenge. Um, so even this evening, we we went out for uh, for an activity to look at in efforts to reducing maternal mortality, uh, and you have to go with security. So those are some of the challenges. Corruption is also a big factor in terms of impeding the ability to provide. Uh, public services uh, across the country. And this is at all levels, both at the level of the national, but at the level of, uh, of the provinces. It's huge, it's a huge challenge. Uh, next slide. Um, I, I've mentioned the fact that the topography, it's, it's, uh, it's challenging. Um, in terms of road access, for example, if you use that as, as, as an index, um, PNG, PNG, of the 22 provinces in PNG, only two PNGs, are, only two provinces are linked to the capital. The central and Gulf are linked to the capital. All the other 19 provinces have no access to the capital. You have to fly, and this is a huge challenge. In this this uh, is a huge challenge in terms of provision of both infrastructure to, const to construct road, communication, electricity, water. It's a huge challenge because of the, it, it's, it's, the topography. It's quite uh, challenging. Um, in, in the area of gender inequality, um, PNG is also famous for a very high rate of violence, uh, including sexual violence against women and children. It's, uh, uh, this, is, this is extremely high. Uh, uh, family violence is very common and it's, uh, it's one of the major uh, issues uh, in the country. Uh, there is lack of a robust identity system, and this is estimated that up to 80% of the population of PNG do not have access to any clear form of identification at all. 
and this is very clearly um, um, illustrated if you have any intervention at the provincial level or at the district level, uh, a simple training, a simple ID card, and a number of people that have bank accounts, for example, are very few. Uh, the very um, uh, 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 significant proportion of the population do not have access to any form of identity, which makes it difficult uh, in terms of programming. Uh, next slide. So, so this is the context in which we are programming. So when you look at uh, programming for health in particular, be it responding to epidemics or pandemics, be it um, strengthening routine immunization, be it addressing key maternal and newborn uh, issues, there, there, there are challenges and opportunities in the system. Uh, those health system challenges uh, provide us opportunity to support, but we need, we need to clearly uh, identify those challenges, and there are multiple. And those challenges include the fact that issues to do with data in terms of quality, in terms of ability to store, in terms of ability to transmit data. Data is a huge challenge in PNG. I think most of uh, us in the call may be aware, but but this is one area where we're we are looking at it, and it's a huge challenge. That's um, in terms of availability of drugs and equipment, um, health cure, health health worker capacity. Issues to do with uh, access, financial access in particular, cash flow uh, for basic service, uh, services is also a challenge. There is a national na health management information system, including e electronic management information system, but this is very sporadic, it's not uh, uh, widely used, and it is weak. Therefore, the data uh, we get is, is a huge challenge. Um, there's another big area of challenge that is not even put on the slide, which is in terms of human resource capacity. This is in terms of number, in terms of number, distribution, and skill mix. Uh, uh, PNG has only 300 doctors for for nine million people. It has only 8,000 um, nurses and midwives. Most most of the over 3,000 um, 800 health facilities, half of those are closed. Um, of the 714 facilities that provide um, deliveries, not all of them are open 24 hours, for example. So these are some of the systemic challenges that we have and we have to operate upon. So that is why we need to look at innovative um, mechanisms or options of um, supporting um, service delivery if we are to make any significant dents in those indices that are very poor. Next slide. So it is within this context and background that uh, uh, we, 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 as part of uh, support to the national response to COVID-19, uh, we introduce um, um, M supply, the, the use of M supply. Uh, this is coming from the backdrop that PNG has already adopted M supply as its official uh, logistic management system uh, for the last seven years. So what what um, UNICEF um, did uh, together with other partners is to expand the application of M supply to additional provinces, and this is with the view to first improve and address those culture and equipment gaps, but also to improve the quality of vaccines. Uh, remember, I've me if I mentioned that um, electricity is a huge challenge, so most of the culture and equipment that we have in the country are, are, are solar powered, and it's very difficult to be able to ascertain the quality of the vaccines. Uh, so we, uh, we, we introduced M supply uh, and with the aim of um, uh, supporting and strengthening uh, uh, that component. Uh, it is also coming from the fact that M supply is able to provide uh, key key uh, key key services that is required at, as of, as uh, as important, uh, especially looking at the fact that we can monitor uh, patient dispensing, including um, customizable uh, vaccine uh, dispensing from which the platform has. It also allows us to do real time mo temperature monitoring of our culture and equipment. During the COVID nineteen, um, UNICEF used uh, funding from Gavi and other sources. You, um, um, the government of Japan and and, and 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 so on and so forth. We use the opportunity to to cover more than 93 percent of the culture and equipment needs of the country, and that provided us a huge opportunity. To, uh, we thought not only to strengthen our capacity to respond to COVID-19, but also to strengthen uh, routine immunization. And so we had 
use uh, this platform to be able to provide real-time monitoring of those cold chain equipments. Uh, okay. Another important use of uh, uh, the M supply, obviously, is stock management, and this is critical not only for vaccine, but for uh, most of the common um, uh, primary healthcare supplies at the PSC level. Next slide. So this, um, during the uh, process of implementation, we identified um, nine provinces, and those nine provinces would identify 300 sites um, and those 300 sites were provided with tablets, and those tab and 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 the healthcare workers were trained. Uh, our initial estimation was to identify th two to three healthcare workers in each health facility, provide them provide them with adequate training, provide them with the tablets. Uh, because of the issues to do with power and so on, we provided those tablets with uh, power banks, uh, and then um, link them to the M supply application and developed. Key, uh, key performance indicators to be able to track the performance of, of this of these 200 sites, uh, including all the provincial vaccine stores uh, that, that were linked. Uh, and we developed a dashboard to be able to do that. We agreed with the National Department of Health on those key performance indicators and put them on a dashboard to monitor on a regular basis. So this is the in terms of uh, uh, overview of the implementation. Uh, next slide. So uh, the overall goal of of the of the project was supposed to go, was supposed to is to strengthen the government's capacity to be able to manage COVID nineteen pandemic, and uh, but especially the functionality of the culture equipment uh, within the context of ensuring that we have quality COVID nineteen vaccines, but also routine immunization vaccine. Uh, we're doing all of this as part of our health system strengthening support to the government of PNG. Uh, ensuring that those uh, PNG moves very cl close to providing universal health coverage and uh, uh, achievement of SDG3. Uh, specifically, it was to support the real-time uh, uh, monitoring uh, of, of the of the logistic management system, uh, ensuring that health workers are able to complete and submit um, accurate data in a timely fashion. Um, this is far, far away from the paper-based one that we do, that when you when, when they send their, their request for supplies, for example, it takes several weeks or months. Uh, we hope, or it's, I hope that uh, with this uh, system, it will be uh, quick, quick, and it will be almost inst inst instant. Uh, also, the, also, it will support the, the government of PNG in terms of um, strengthening not only the vaccines, but also the medical supplies for primary health care, uh, especially knowing uh, the type of, um, or with a deep understanding of the type of topography uh, uh, that we have in the country. It's extremely difficult to move supplies from one province to the other, uh, most of which you have to come to the capital and then fly them, even because of the logistics of moving simple amoxicillin or simple uh, uh, 10,000 doses of BCG, for example, is a huge challenge. Uh, and sometimes the, the government, including the provincial authorities, do fail in this regard that they tend to seek for help. So we're hoping that the, the, or the introduction or expansion of this application will simplify and this and will make those uh, much easier. And the stock outs that we see and the wastages from vaccines will significantly uh, disappear. Uh, next slide. So in terms of um, uh, specifically uh, the project components, uh, there were two major components of the project. Uh, one was to, su to support uh, in, the, in filling the gaps for culture and equipment, uh, including the provision of um, uh, vaccine carriers, um, culture and equipment, and so on of, uh, for in these 300 sites, including provincial vaccine stores as well as training healthcare workers on the on the use of uh, the application specifically providing 300 tablets for each one per site and training healthcare workers on the use of the application uh, we also use the opportunity of that to add additional application uh, as you hear in the in the in the next few uh, minutes uh, to be able to train health workers uh, uh, using the same tablet. Next slide. Uh, 
we, we, because of the peculiarities of the environment we're working on, we're very careful in terms of the way we we went about supporting the government to implement uh, this approach. We we did a quick um, 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 a review of the of the digital uh, environment and which and which partners are implementing the project. Where we had several uh, meetings with the National Department of Health, but there were key there were key key areas that were were, were critical. Uh, one was the coordination role of the National uh, de Department of Health, uh, the capacity and understanding or the literacy level or the digital literacy level uh, of the National Health Department as well as the provincial. Uh, um, leaders and ensuring that they are properly engaged and and um, going to the provincial vaccine stores that act as hubs, uh, that acts as uh, uh, a critical um, uh, linkage between the health facilities and the uh, at the national level. So those 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 were engaged. We had uh, we trained them first. And they had a very good understanding, and we now identified those 300 sites uh, in the, those nine provinces where we equally identified healthcare workers that were trained uh, over a period of time. Even though the, our approach to our training, we 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 learned as as you hear all as well that we could have probably. Uh, Use a very different approach because um, the approach to training was uh, was that we we brought healthcare workers uh, from the health facility to district and trained them. But we quickly realized that the the literacy level at the health facility and district level was so low that um, each health provider needs a significant amount of time. In fact, um, some are even afraid to use the tablet just because they don't know how to operate it. Uh, so they may have a phone, but the phone is usually very basic. They do not understand how to use a, a smartphone, talk less of a tablet. So we need to spend a lot of time on, on hand holding and teaching and teaching them on how to use the application. Next slide. So so we 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 supported nine provinces. In those nine provinces, we looked at 278 health facilities. Uh, in the 22 districts that in each province, there is a, prov a provincial vaccine store, uh, which was also supported. So we looked at the 22 provincial vaccine stores plus 278 health facilities, making a total of 300 sites, um, of which we targeted to train about 1,000 healthcare workers. We ended up with training about 600 uh, healthcare workers across these 278 sites. Uh, of those 600 uh, trained, um, 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 uh, about more than half of the sites have done their first talk, take up, are able to use it, the application, and we are, uh, we are monitoring their performance on the dashboard. Uh, it's, we estimated that about 30% of the population of these nine provinces uh, have direct, uh, within the catchment area uh, population of these uh, 300 sites, and um, that, that number came to about 1.3 uh, million people. Next slide. So this is a sample of the M supply dashboard in PNG. Uh, this is specifically looking at uh, vaccines, and in this one, um, this is a sample uh, of the the green number represents the number of sites that have uh, that uh, that have done their stock take, and the the red the red number or the red number H two represents the number of sites that have synchronized their tablets within the last seven days. Uh, ideally, we would want this number to be 80, 90 percent uh, of health facilities being able to 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 synchronize their tablets, being able to tell us about their uh, the, the temperature within their fridges, being able to give us their stock up, up, uh, updates, their balances, the vaccine, uh, 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 how many they have used for within the last one month or so, and all of that. So, so this is the type of uh, uh, key performance indicator we monitor on, on each of those dashboards. Next slide. Uh, so this is an example of one of the provinces. This is East New Britain. East New of the nine provinces, this is one of our best performing uh, provinces. East, East New Britain have 29 health facilities. Of the 29 health facilities, 28 have, have done stock take. They are fully uh, using the application, and only f uh, five uh, 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 sites have not done 
um, so have not synchronized their, their tablet within the last uh, one week. So you can see about it's two percent of the of the health facilities, and uh, not only are, are using the application, but are also are synchronizing their tablet. There are many reasons why East New Britain is like this, or compared to the other provinces, and so we're learning why is New Britain is doing well compared to others and we're, we're transferring that learning to other sites. One of the reasons why East New Britain is doing well is the commitment of the PHA, the, the person that we've trained and that the mechanism they have used to leverage on other uh, resources within the province to be able to go facility by facility to train the healthcare worker, uh, to be able to use the tablet and demystify the phobia of um, um, using um, uh, tablets, including the fact that they're able to bring their tablets uh, out of the rural area where there's no electricity or power, uh, there's no power or internet connectivity to the district center to be able to surprise every week. Uh, so those are some of the uh, uh, reasons why East New Britain is uh, doing well compared to the other provinces. Next slide. So we we. Uh, part of the learning and part of what PNG had experienced, uh, obviously, in the implementation of the M Supply, it um, uh, provides us the the perfect opportunity to, uh, to, to be able to share with you, uh, and that the fact that the M Supply platform is a is a huge opportunity to support not only management of COVID-19 but management of routine uh, immunization vaccine or vaccine related to, to to EPI as a whole. And we think that um, with a lot of hand holding and support, um, countries and PNG in particular can be able to strengthen their logistic management system, not only for vaccine to improve um, RI, uh, but also to improve primary health care as, as, as a whole. Um, are, are there opportunities for this? Yes, we think that in PNG, the presence of the or the opportunity of the M supply has um, been approved as the logistic management system for the country provides us the opportunity to get a lot of support from NDOH and also to, to use that uh, platform to expand the platform to cover other EPI vaccines uh, uh, as well. Uh, we also think that there are at least three, three other players, DFAT, um, uh, World Vision uh, are, also, are all implementing, uh, are all supporting the, the, are all supporting the use of M Supply. Uh, M Supply is also the logistic management application for for H, HIV uh, supplies and TV. Uh, so we think that um, this is a huge opportunity to, to use the same application and system to expand. Uh, the e, e NHIS or the, the electronic health management measure system being rolled out in PNG also provides us opportunity to interface with M Supply to be able to link them up uh, and uh, provide a more uh, robust system uh, for PNG. Uh, we think that it is possible. It is. It will take uh, some resources. It will take um, initial uh, training and building capacity of healthcare workers, including uh, managers of health at different levels. But we also think that it is. It forms the basis for gradual expansion. Uh, of the application of M supply, uh, not only for COVID-19, but for all for all EPI vaccines across the country. Uh, we also strongly believe that it is sustainable. Uh, it's a PNG uh, is a unique country with, with the uh, difficult geographical terrain, and that the use of uh, electronic uh, management system, not uh, uh, for vaccines and for PSC uh, supplies, is a health system strengthening intervention. Now we think we support uh, PNG in addressing its health challenges. Next slide. Um, so this is the remote health worker uh, training component, and my colleague uh, Harriet will take over from you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Dr. Gaba. Um, so as we've seen, digital literacy in PNG is a particular um, struggle. Um, and so the remote health worker training is something that we implemented to help try and address this. So the remote health worker training initiative is funded by Johnson and Johnson. Um, it's multi-channel and phone agnostic. So it includes modalities that can accommodate basic phones and those with low literacy and low digital literacy. So IVR, SMS, USSD. Um, and feature phone and smartphone channels too, such as Moodle, a virtual learning environment app that works fully offline. Internet of Good Things, which is a zero rated web platform. That means that you can access it um, as long as you've got a feature phone or a smartphone, and you, but with no data bundle. Um, and WhatsApp and Telegram chatbots. 
Um, and so COVID-19 content was developed as part of this initiative and the use case in PNG was a new one. Um, so using Moodle, this virtual learning environment to support the use of a digital health tool. Um, and we've been very mindful about tracking knowledge attitudes practices. So quizzes are embedded throughout the content and certification for health workers who complete the modules. So in PNG, these M Supply tablets provided us with a great opportunity to implement this. Um, so they've been distributed to facilities and been preloaded with Moodle, including modules. And so the courses that we're rolling out in PNG, we developed especially for PNG, a digital literacy safeguarding and misinformation module, um, a COVID-19 vaccination training um, and introduction to, um, well, M Supply content on there as well to support that um, implementation. Um, and workshops have been conducted to train health workers on Moodle um, and each user um, briefed on how to access their account and review the course content. Um, and users given paper-based documents um, and brief reminders on how to log into their accounts. Um, yeah, next slide, please. So in addition to this initiative, um, Gavi is also funding a digital literacy assessment um, and there's a gender lens component to this. So PNG was really um, a great opportunity for this work. Um, we know there's a huge gender, digital gender divide. Um, GSMA conducted a survey and found that only 16% of women owned a SIM card um, and 96% of women um, who didn't own a mobile phone said they couldn't afford it. Um, and we found that less than two thirds of women were comfortable making a phone call and less than half were comfortable sending an SMS. Um, and really as well, we wanted to, we've been very mindful about this throughout and we want to sort of keep examining this. So unintended consequences um, and doing no harm. So we know that for women in PNG, access to digital can be a great tool to overcome this lack of infrastructure and availability of key services that we've been learning about. But there is a paradoxical relationship between mobile phones and women's safety. So while mobile phones can make women feel safer, there are also um, safety concerns related to mobile phone ownership and use, um, such as theft, um, harassment, harassment by phone calls, messages, online security risks, um, and concerns that mobile use can trigger domestic violence. Um, and so these can all create a barrier to women's mobile phone ownership and use. Um, so as I said, we've been very mindful of these um, throughout. Um, and we've had no problems reported thus far. Um, and our context is a little bit different because our tablets are sitting in the health facilities. So it's a little bit less risky, but certainly something where we're looking to do um, more research into. So we are looking to um, adapt and design a digital literacy assessment toolkit. Um, so lots of digital literacy assessment toolkits exist, um, but not really for our target demographic of incredibly sort of low digitally literate um, rural health workers. Um, and so we want to include a hard skills test and um, sort of a focus group discussion um, guide to help us establish a baseline digital literacy level before some of our health workers are given these tablets, trained on M Supply and trained on how to use Moodle, which of course has these digital literacy modules embedded in it. Um, and then this assessment will be repeated to establish um, an end line, hopefully maybe a midline too, um, but <laughs> working in PNG is tough, so we'll have to see about that. Um, and we really want to compare and contrast um, sort of the male and female health workers um, digital literacy levels and track whether the program demonstrates any increase in digital literacy levels. Next slide, please. Anyhow, so moving on to the whole implementation, um, M Supply and Moodle. As we keep saying, digital literacy is still a challenge for us in PNG. Um, and so this digital literacy assessment and digital literacy safeguarding and misinformation module that we developed is a response to this. And we know that this sort of digital literacy training needs to be baked in from the very start. Access to electricity, we know it's challenging and it's hard to keep these tablets charged. And, um, you know, one thing that we've learned is that we did not procure sort of the most expensive um, power banks chargers um, in the first batch. Um, and so they weren't really sort of charging. They were a little slow to charge the tablets. And so the lesson learned there was not to cheap out um, on those devices. Um, 
Training is extremely expensive and time consuming due to the distances um, involved. Um, and health workers, you know, having to travel far and being out of their facilities for a really long time. Um, so we've really tried to be mindful about better coordination and collaboration with other UNICEF teams, as well as other IPs, to try and share the burden of these training sessions and supervisory visits to increase the time efficiencies for health workers and reduce costs. And as Dr. Garb has already said, you know, training in class classrooms is just not as, as, as effective for healthcare workers. They really require those practical sessions in clinic where they feel more comfortable um, and a lot of handholding too. Um, there is this absence of capacity at the national level to own and coordinate and sort of roll out activities. And so we'll continue to work on building the government's capacity. Um, we've certainly found, and it's something we're looking to change, that we do have multiple IPs, implementing partners, um, supporting digital <laughs> health activities, but not working always as collaboratively as they could. And so we're sort of thinking through um, ways to address that. So you know, maybe an AHIN convergence workshop to bring all the stakeholders together and really sort of come up with a robust, comprehensive plan to get everyone on the same page, along with obviously the um, Ministry of Health, um, you know, and a digital health technical working group um, community of practice. Um, and last slide, please. And finally, you know, <laughs> um, we do know that PNG, you know, there is this misinformation issue. We know there's backsliding. But, you know, to finish on a positive note, despite lots of the challenges that we've outlined, PNG is really tough to work in. We are making progress um, and we feel really positively about carefully designed and appropriate digital health interventions. Um, and so this list here is, it's not exhaustive. It's, you know, ideas that were always bouncing around for sort of new digital health interventions that we could be um, adding to the existing programming. Um, and, you know, we'd love to um, discuss this with um, sort of all of the partners on the call and, you know, discuss sort of teaming up for work in, in PNG potentially. Um, so for misinformation, you know, we're always thinking about digital engagement, whether that's via SMS, IVR, interactive radio or social media. Um, social listening too, to really understand, you know, what are the rumors that are going around? Um, how can we, we be working to counteract those? Um, huge zero dose um, problem. Um, and so micro planning is something as well that, you know, we're, we're always considering. Um, the limited resources that we have, so GI, GIS mapping to plot health facilities and populations, so we can really optimize and direct resources to the right places. Um, for our rural populations, which is majority of the population, so PNG is a prime candidate for telehealth interventions, um, especially as hopefully, you know, connectivity does continue to improve. Um, with regards to the remote health worker training, there's scope to be including additional content on there to, to augment the content that we already have. Um, and existing resources, you know, we already have these tablets and they're in, facil in facilities. So how can we use these more? Um, and, you know, electronic decision support tools, that's, that's a very quick win. That's something that we could add to these tablets. Um, as Dr. Garbo was telling us, um, cold chain is not digitized, so it's potentially a quick win to integrate that into M-Supply. Um, and I'll finish on the unique ID, unique, ID, unique identify issue. Um, this is definitely a challenge we have, especially when it comes to electronic medical records and so on and so forth. Um, no obvious solutions to that. It's a big piece of work, um, but also on our radar. Um, so yeah, that's it. That is the last slide. Um, and we would love to um, take your questions. Thanks.